Hey folks, it's time your frugal preppers. So, back on the old Honda here, you can see there's been some of this white streaking. It's down here on the manifold. And the, uh oh, there's some green stuff on the radiator hose here. And um, if you look down in here, you can see where it's been seeping. I've been smelling a little whiffs of antifreeze as I drive. And um, the you can't really see it, but the reservoir coolant tank is empty, and uh, the radiator was empty, although I've actually drained it now, but it wasn't full, I will say. So, I've drained the coolant out of it. Um, I am going to have to do this. I'm not going to be able to jack it up, but it looks like you can get to everything from the top. Um, so, I've ordered the new radiator. It came in. Um, I knew this was weeping. So I got a Sunbelt off of eBay. It's the same brand they sold at the local lot of parts store, the Sunbelt Lifetime Warranty. They wanted $144 for it. The eBay seller was $40 free shipping. So um, I've got my poor man's tool cart right here. And um, I got the uh, Pontiac already up on all four of my jack stands in here. Um, I just got doing a, done doing a transmission service. Let me turn this radio off. Um, changing the fluid and filter. Got to do the fuel injector, troubleshoot that. Uh, I got a new catalytic converter in that tall box over there that's got to go on it. Um, and, uh, I don't know, there was something else. But So this one's kind of out of commission right now. And tore apart on oh, the rear trans mount. I'm doing that. So I've been driving that one, which... The exhaust leak has gotten worse on it, but my friend, who's a mechanic, is going to let me use the lift uh, at uh, 2 o'clock on next Saturday here. Get that up in the air and roll it in any piece of flex pipe. He's got all the good tools, um, and he knows how to weld really well, so that'll be nice. And um, But these are a pretty common failure on these Hondas. Um, they got this plastic tank on an aluminum core, and that gasket in between there starts leaking. And... You have this problem. Um, take out some bolts that hold the condenser on. There's two on the top, two down below. Um, take off the electric fans. Take off your radiator hoses. Take off your coolant hoses. And um, it's a pretty simple job. Um, I'll kind of document it a little at a time as I go through it here. And see if I can figure out how to splice them videos together on the Macintosh. So, I've always been a Windows user, but I'm using a Mac now. Really, I, you know, for my primary PC is Windows, although I work on a lot of Linux stuff, and um, but mostly at Linux as servers. So, all right, I will uh, keep you updated. I'll do as good of a job documenting this as a as a uh, fat dude that was just under anesthesia at nine o'clock this morning can do. Um, I got the rest of the day off work because I'm not allowed to work or drive for the next 24 hours. I'm not supposed to use sharp tools either. I don't think those are sharp. I think I'll be all right. So, <laughs> all right, I'll keep you updated. So, I've taken the top radiator hose off. That's sitting to the side. The coolant is, of course, drained. Um, and I've taken this overflow hose that went right here. That's off. And it also connects into the fan uh, shroud right here it runs through there you have to kind of pull that out of there pretty hard and it comes out um, so now I'm going to go ahead and take the coolant fans off it looks like I have an electrical connector here and an electrical connector right here and I got this bolt a bolt in the middle that goes through both fans and this bolt here it looks to me like they just go into like a slide down bracket in the bottom so they should pull up and come out um, it also looks like I may have to deal with these little nylon zip ties that are kind of holding some of this together here um, and that, if that's the case those uh, do come off they have a little tab you can just squeeze to release them you don't have to cut them okay I'll be back so I've gotten the bolt three bolts across the front um, I have taken that little uh, tab down there that holds one of the lines up to the fan um, loose. It's just got this little tabby pull and it comes loose. Um, 
Now there are these little nuts back here that those three bolts go into. Now I would be mindful if you're using an aftermarket radiator or whatever to make sure those are there on your new one. Um, in my case, it does come with uh, new bolts, new nuts in there. Um, so I don't have to worry about retrieving those and reusing them. Um, the electrical connector is off of this fan, and as you can see, it simply lifts up and out of the way. Um, I'll set these off to the side, and um, I'll do pretty much the same thing, remove this electrical connector, lift this fan out, and then we'll be ready to get to the bolts that hold this to the condenser, and there are two transmission lines down here at the bottom. And what I'll do is pinch those off with some needle nose vice grips so I don't lose too much transmission fluid. And then uh, remove that lower radiator hose. And um, we should be ready to pull this radiator up out of here. So I will be back uh, with an update. So one of the things to be mindful of on the driver's side fan here is the wiring connector, which is here, also goes through this little hook. You have to pull that. And there was a third nylon strap um, when I tried to remove it. However, it just broke. So I'll have to put a new nylon strap around that stuff. But it goes around these hoses and stuff right here. And just holds them up against the fan. Uh, probably isn't 100% necessary to put it back. But I imagine what it does is reduces the amount of rubbing they do up against the hard parts by holding them secure. So they don't get a hole rubbed in them. So I'll, put, I'll probably put that back in place. Okay, you can see here now, we've got pretty clear access to both of our transmission lines down there. Um, what I'll do is I'm reusing this coolant because I just did a timing belt and water pump on this thing about 300 miles ago. And um, that's a brand new coolant. And that coolant's expensive, so I'm going to run it through a shop towel, filter it, and put it back in. Um, uh, so once I, uh, I'll slide that trans the antifreeze pan out put a pan, another pan under there to collect any transmission fluid so that we can uh, save the uh, polar bears and the caribou or whatever and then um, there's some bolts two bolts here on top and then you can't really see it hardly but there's another bolt down here I mean just a couple inches down here on the side that I'll have to get to with a wrench um, so that separates the AC condenser from the radiator I said there's another bolt a couple inches down here that's not one you take out that goes to the bracket for the AC condenser and not the radiator on both sides however part way down there are a couple bolts right here where my ratchet is uh, my socket wrench is right now I already took the one out but there is also one on that side as well so not hard to get to we'll just take these out and um, then we'll be ready to take the hoses off. Okay, so I have removed the transmission lines. I've got my small dragon pan under there to collect the transmission fluid so that we don't hurt any caribou or polar bears. And uh, now I am ready. I've got the condenser loose, radiators loose, um, all of the hoses are disconnected. So we are ready to lift this sucker up on out of here. It's just going to take two hands here, but um, I will show you when I get this out of here. What we do is just compare the original uh, factory radiator with the replacement part. Um, we can see here that the, uh, the, the one transmission line over here is just a little longer. This one comes a little farther over, bends up, and goes a little higher than they do on this factory one uh, that's fine I see that the petcock's a little different style this has got like a kind you grab with your fingers uh, where the factory one was red and it, you used a, like a Phillips screwdriver to get that out um, other than that all the bolt holes look like they line up from just a quick visual inspection um, it does not come with a new radiator cap but my old one wasn't leaking. Um, I might price a new one. 
because I'm, I'm looking at it and um, let me show you. The, it's not terrible, but you can see where that rubber's got a little wear on it. It's getting a little edge to it. You know, uh, for what a radiator cap costs, that might be worthwhile. Rather than to have that thing start leaking and blow off and on my hour-long commute to work in the morning, right? Um, I inspected the radiator hoses. Um, they don't look too bad. Uh, they're not swollen. They still got some good stiffness to them. So I'm not going to replace anything there. I think the transmission lines are fine. All the original clamps are fine. I can reuse those. So it's pretty much just a matter of dropping it back in here and filling it, reconnecting everything, filling it with the antifreeze, and checking the transmission fluid. So I will be back as I get to that point. Okay, so uh, I've got the new radiator in. I've rehooked up the transmission lines and the bottom radiator hose. I've gone ahead and put it in the top two bolts for the condenser bracket just to hold that in place. Um, so now what I want to do is to go ahead and just clean off all that transmission fluid and a little bit of antifreeze down there. I'll move my drain pan just a hair. And just uh, just like my uh, favorite YouTube channel, I gotta be like, boom, brake cleaner. You guys know who that is. Mine's a different brand than his, but I got an auto zone down the street. <laughs> Within a walking distance. <laughs> Which is nice when you need a part and your car ain't running. Okay, good. That's all good. So now I'm just going to put these bottom bolts in, get the fans back in, hook up the upper hose, put the brackets back on. Pretty much in the uh, reverse order of how I took it apart. I'm going to go ahead and do what I decided is um so unless you take off the power steering pump and alternator and unless you have the or have the uh, radiator fans out you are not going to get that uh, overfill uh, reservoir or whatever they call it reserve antifreeze overfill tank overflow tank whatever um, you can't get that out of there so now that I have nice clear access to the side of it, this is the perfect time to go ahead and pull that sucker out of there like I tried to before. Which it sucked because I had all that stuff off doing the timing belt, but then I put it all back on and I was like, I want to clean that. Couldn't get it out. So, this is the perfect time to take that sucker out and clean it. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so uh, the reservoir bottle cleaned out as good as I could get it. Um, it's not too bad. A lot better than it was. Uh, now I'm ready to put the fans in here. I have uh, a rather rusty motor mount uh, bracket where it goes to the cross member and stuff there. I just went ahead and sprayed some fluid film around that. Um, just to slow the rust down. Um, it's this product right here, which I also learned about from South Main Auto. Um, it's good stuff for rusty cars. I'm trying to slow the rust down when you see it. Um, so, um, I am ready to go ahead and stick the fans back in this and start uh, getting it wrapped up. Okay, so I got everything back in and together. I have no bolts left over. It was a good thing. Um, I got topped off with coolant. Well, I just, just uh, filtered that used coolant through a shop wag, put it back in because it's only a couple weeks old. And for a bottle that concentrates like 16 bucks. Yeah, I'm using all makes, all models. Universal antifreeze. Just because I'm, I'm mean to my cars, that's why. Um, but, yep, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start it up now. Let it run. Cycle the thermostat a few times. And top off the thermostat and the overflow bottle. I'll check the rest of the fluids and stuff. But then uh, this thing's ready to go. Ready to haul me to work tomorrow. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. This is Tom, your frugal prepper. Ugly dugly, folks. So I've got the uh, fluids all topped off. I've let it run. And the fans are on right now. I've let it cycle the fans a couple times. 
no leaks, everything's good. Got good pressure on the system. Um, had to top off the transmission fluid. Um, I had about a half a quart left in this, and it took just about all of it. Just a hair low. I leave it. I'll leave it that way. Just drive it in perfectly level. I'll wait till I get on good level ground. I'll take another quart with me, like on the way to work. Stop checking at the gas station after a good highway drive when it's getting hot. Um, but yep, it's all running. There's no leaks. Makes me a happy man. So cheap fix. And um, this is easily if you got all your tools laid out and ready, a half hour job. Um, shouldn't be any more than an hour. Um, it's going to need some sockets, good pliers, um, to 10 and 12 millimeters all you need. Um, short extension. I have my long extension out here. Um, but that's just because I was taking that coolant tank out and that made it a little easier. But you could do it with no extension if you really had to. Um, so hopefully anybody else that's got a... Like, uh, I think it's like 02 through 08 uh, Elantra Hyundai is a radiator uh, that'll give you a little clue how to do it um, and you can get it pretty cheap on eBay it's a Sun X it does have a lifetime warranty um, everything seemed to line up just fine now for the bottom two condenser bolts that they're on a clip I had to push that clip in to make it line up with the new hole but the clips made so that it's adjustable so that was no big deal there. But it's running. You can probably hear the exhaust leak. <laughs> That's getting fixed on Saturday. That's that flex pipe came loose. Um, other than that, it's good to go. I'm ready to go to work tomorrow. You want to say hi, Wesley? Hi. He's my little helper. Yeah. What you working on? We'll put a radiator in Honda. See, there's the old one right there. There. The big metal thing laying there. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's been out here helping me more instead of playing video games and stuff. Yeah, but the police didn't get fired for the remnants. Okay. We're never going to read the DVD books. Yeah, you got to read them, but I got to take them back to the library tomorrow. Yeah. Just get one of them. Alright folks, I'll talk to you later. This is Tom at Frugal Prepper. I'm going to clean this, my mess up, and go eat dinner.